Hey guys, this is Brian with Bear Cards 34 uh, coming at you with another show and tell video. This one is the 1979 Topps football card set. Uh, this has 528 cards and as with the 1978 set that I did earlier this week, uh, this is a pretty affordable set overall. You know, you can get these in pretty good condition um, at a fairly reasonable price. Uh, this set is most notable for a couple of rookies, uh, including most notably Earl Campbell of the Houston Oilers. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the interesting cards and, and backgrounds on a handful of players from the set that year, as well as a look at a lot of Hall of Famers. Uh, some of them aging Hall of Famers near the end of their careers, while other ones were uh, up-and-coming uh, future Hall of Famers uh, that would really make their mark in the 1980s. So we'll go ahead and get started on this. Um, this card here, James Scott, this is a wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. You'll notice the typical logo with the C on the side of the helmet is not there. As with other sets from this time period, uh, the NFL uh, had not given permission to Topps. They didn't have the rights to show the logo, so they would have to airbrush those off. Uh, so anyway, this is the typical standard front design. And you'll see here on the back, it has along with the statistics and a little blurb about the player. Uh, down at the bottom, you'll see uh, some interesting notes of uh, some of these uh, uh, players. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started with uh, showing you kind of some of the cards that are notable for this set. This right here is the NFL passing leaders, two legendary Hall of Famers from the 70s. Uh, between the two of them, had quite a few Super Bowl championships under their belt. Uh, we also have the 1978 NFL receiving leaders right here. Uh, Ricky Young, I believe, was actually a running back, uh, but led the NFC. And at this point, uh, you know, the Seahawks and the AFC at that time with Steve Largent uh, taking the lead for, for uh, the uh, NFC, or the AFC. Now, this right here is an example of one of the checklists. They don't really do a lot of this anymore, uh, but back then this was a way that people who collected cards would be able to know who... Uh, who had cards that year and, and who to look out for, uh, especially then pre-internet. You know, it was really tough to kind of know what might be, uh, who might be on that list. So anyway, this is a good example of uh, one of the handful of checklist cards. This right here is also an example of part of the set. They include the record breakers. So for the 1978 season, Earl Campbell had the most yards um, rushing for a rookie. What's noticeable or notable about this set as well is that uh, Earl Campbell only had football cards from Topps made in the 1979 set and not again in his career. Uh, he had a contract dispute with Topps. I don't know all the details of that, but basically other than his rookie season, which he has a handful of cards, uh, we wouldn't see Earl Campbell cards from a major uh, manufacturer of card co cards again until uh, you know the more recent years that we see now. So anyway, this is the record breaker card. Another record breaker here is Ricky Young, who had the most receptions for a running back in a season as of 1978, which was 88. And he broke a former teammate, Chuck Foreman, who had 73 back in 75. Uh, now, one thing I'll show you, because obviously, uh, for those of you who follow my channel, you know I'm a huge Walter Payton fan. So I love this card right here. We've got both Walter Payton and Earl Campbell together as the leading rushers in the NFL for that year. Uh, Payton had a handful of cards made, so we also have this record breaker here. Uh, the most combined attempts in a season. And... Each team also had a, a team card. Uh, this one right here uh, shows Peyton with a few of his fellow teammates uh, who were some of the leads for the, uh, the Bears that season. Now, uh, I have a handful of these because anytime I see one, I just kind of have to pick it up. But uh, you'll see here a few Walter Peyton cards. This one is my graded card. Um, it's a 
PSA 8. Someday I'd like to get one that's a little better, but it does actually look quite nice. Uh, and I'm just glad to have a grade of that. So anyway, yeah, there are my uh, Walter Payton cards. Uh, next up, uh, I, you know, I, I, I have mentioned before, but I try to collect cards of players from my home state of Utah. Um, in this set, there were not very many. Uh, let's see if I can get that a little... There we go. So this is Jim Turner from Utah State. And that's the only Utah State Aggie in the set. And this is Golden Richards. Here he is with the Bears. He also played with the Cowboys. Uh, known quite a bit for his speed. Um, he played for BYU. Uh, and His senior year he played for Hawaii, but before that he had been a BYU player. And then this is Norm Thompson, who played at the University of Utah. So you'll see there, uh, those are the only three cards of uh, players from the set of 1979 to appear who played college in the state of Utah. So not very many that year at all. All right, so here's one of the more notable cards in the set from 1979. This is the rookie card and the one and only card of Tony Dungy. And Tony Dungy, of course, went on to become a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, he coached uh, the Colts to the Super Bowl. Sadly, they beat my Bears, uh, but he was a great coach. So this is his um, rookie card. Uh, he only appeared in the, the team leader's uh, card. He didn't have an individual card of his own. So they're noticing, notifying here that he had the six interceptions. Uh, so quite a nice season there. You know, and that he included in that card with Franco Harris and some of those other notable Steelers from the 70s. Good card there. They also include uh, the championship cards. So right here you'll see that we have the Franco Harris on the cover there of the AFC Championships, Steelers 34, Oilers 5, so pretty much a blowout, as was this game right here, uh, Cowboys 28, Rams 0. Now the Super Bowl, luckily for those who watched, uh, was a much closer game. So here we have the Steelers 36, Cowboys 31. Now I'll kind of go into it, just a handful of kind of interesting things I found of some of the players from, from this season. This right here is Steve Little. Uh, he is a, a kicker. In fact, he was a um, the third highest drafted kicker in NFL history. He was the 15th pick of the draft. Um, in fact, uh, he, they, he was drafted before Ozzie Newsome, Todd Christensen, some of the other uh, really notable players that came out of this draft. He was an All-American kicker and punter. Um, he had a 67-yard field goal, uh, which was a tie for an NCAA record. But although he was highly recruit, you know, highly thought of, and did great in college in the pros, he really struggled. He was awful with his field goal percentage at only 48% over three years. He also missed 10 of his 51. PATs, you know, and so that that's just not going to cut it. And so anyway, you know, kind of a really sad story here. In 1980, he was cut from the team, and then just hours later, uh, his car hydroplaned and slammed into a signpost, and he became paralyzed from the shoulders down. So uh, it was really quite a quite a sad story there to just hear um, kind of what he had gone through there. Now here is a rookie card of of Doug Williams. Uh, he's obviously most known as the starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins in the uh, Super Bowl during the strike-shortened 1987 season. So Doug Williams, um, he was also the Super Bowl MVP for that. And what was notable there was, you know, he started his career with the Buccaneers. Um, after a few years there, he ended up uh, in the USFL. And then he got a call from Joe Gibbs asking if, uh, he would come and be the backup for the Redskins. And so uh, Doug Williams said yes and went uh, to the team and was the backup for Jay Schrader. And anyway, Jay Schrader dealt with some injuries. Doug Williams was able to go in, um, and, you know, the rest was history for, for him and for the, for the Redskins. Um, my understanding is he had only started two games in the season, uh, so it was pretty impressive, you know, that he was able to come in and, and, and lead the team to the Super Bowl like that. Uh, this next card here, this is Jim Hart. 
And I took a look. He had a very long career. He played from 1966 to 1984. He had, um, the reason I show this card is just as a kind of a trivia question here, if you ever get, uh, he has the most interceptions in a Pro Bowl game ever. And he had five of them. So great that he was able to get to the Pro Bowl, but he did throw five interceptions in one Pro Bowl game in 1977. So pretty pretty remarkable there. <laughs> so uh, next up we have uh, this card right here. This is Drew Pearson. And what I was going to mention about Drew Pearson here uh, was that he was a great player for the Cowboys, and he was a big part of uh, some of their teams in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, he had a car accident, got, got kind of injured internally, had some problems, uh, and he ended up retiring. Um, but the Cowboys, as a gesture of what he meant to the team, has de had basically designated 88 as a number to give to one of their to, to basically their top receiver you know so des bryant michael Irvin, some of those have worn that as well um, next up we have al bubba baker so al bubba baker you know he is definitely an underrated uh player uh i i i, I remember him uh he played up until 1990 um but i didn't realize just how good he was so he was the 1978 Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, he was a three-time Pro Bowler, and Sports Illustrated actually named him the number nine greatest pass rusher in NFL history. Now, he's only credited as having 65 and a half sacks, um, but uh, he actually had many, many more than that. In fact, this year right here, uh, they think that he had 23 sacks, including five in one game. Uh, so that's pretty pretty impressive there. So this right here is Steve DeBerg. This is his rookie card. Uh, Steve DeBerg is a guy who played for many years. He He's kind of a journeyman quarterback, but from time to time he was able to be the number one quarterback and had some really good success. He also is the oldest quarterback to ever be on a Super Bowl winning team roster. He was 45 years old, uh, so that is pretty impressive as well. Now, here we have uh, Wilbert Montgomery. Uh, Wilbert Montgomery, this is his rookie card. Uh, he was definitely one of the more successful and popular uh, players in Eagles history. Um, so I make note of him just because he, you know, he was in multiple Pro Bowls and definitely uh, had a, a very solid career. All right. So then next up will be Craig Colquitt. And if that last name sounds familiar, uh, he had two sons who both were punters in the NFL not long ago, Dustin and Britton Colquitt. Uh, and they also both won Super Bowl rings just like their dad, Craig, here. Uh, he's a two-time Super Bowl champ with the Steelers. Um, here's another card of John Matuzak. I think I showed him for the 1978 set as well. He's best known as Sloth from Goonies, uh, along with his NFL career. And this is Virgil Levers, Livers, Virgil Livers of the Chicago Bears. Uh, he he actually had one of the more notorious sports injuries. I'm not going to go into the gruesome details of that, but if you're interested, go ahead and look it up. Um, he did. He had a five year career with the Bears. Uh, next up, we have David Whitehurst, and again, this is a a, a player that I'm showing mostly just because um, for those who are more familiar. Uh, with with more modern football, he, he's the father of Charlie Whitehurst, who was a journeyman quarterback. I think he retired about four or five years ago. Um, but again, that's uh, you know his uh, his card. I don't know that may be his only card. I'm not sure. So this here, Joe Theismann. Uh, you know, this is Joe Theismann, just as he and his Redskins were really starting to pick up, and he was starting to make a little bit of a name for himself. And then this right here is Tony Hill. Uh, Tony Hill uh, was a uh, Super Bowl champion, three-time Pro Bowler. He made the Cowboys' 50th anniversary team, so definitely a, a good notable player from this set. And then this is John Jefferson's rookie card. Uh, he pl played three years with the Chargers, and he's the first player in the NFL history 
with three straight 1,000-yard seasons to start a career. So he was off to a great start there with Dan Fouts, really airing it out with him. But then a contract dispute led to him getting traded to the Packers. He did make the Pro Bowl one more time after that, but he never really matched those numbers from those first three years with uh, with the Chargers. This is another notable rookie card. This is his second year, but it is his first card made. So Ricky Bell was a star at US, USC, drafted in 1977 with the number one overall pick. And a lot of people felt Tony Dorsett, arguably, should have been picked uh, number one overall. However, it kind of makes sense because the Buccaneers coach had been Ricky Bell's coach at USC before he went on to coach the Bucs. Uh, so, you know, there's a little bit of a, a, a rationale for doing that. Uh, he actually signed a five-year contract for $1.2 million, which was by far the highest contract ever signed by a rookie up to that point. His best year was in 1979, where he had nearly 1,300 yards. Uh, they made the playoffs, you know, for the first time with a playoff win. They made it all the way to the NFC Championship, which is pretty impressive since they didn't even get a win for a couple of years as they started out. Um, he ended up getting traded to the, the Chargers in 1982, and he just wasn't himself. He started, you know, having weight loss and aches and skin problems and just all kinds of health issues. So he had to retire in 83, and unfortunately he died in uh, uh, 1984 at age 29. Um, it was caused by um, uh, heart issues related to dermatomyositis, I think is what it's called. Uh, anyway, they made a movie about his story called Triumph of the Heart, I think that was made in the early 90s, maybe. Uh, but, you know, he was the, um, he was, a you know, one of those really successful initial Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just, at the, you know, the, the start of their organization. Uh, now, here we have a legendary tight end Hall of Famer, Ozzie Newsom. This is his rookie card. Um, he made the Hall of Fame in 99. Uh, he played from 78 to 90, six-time All-Pro. He was on the uh, 80s All-Decade team. He was the 23rd pick of the draft this this that year, uh, two-time Super Bowl champ as a Ravens general manager as well. So he's really been successful even in his you know later years uh, with that. Now speaking of Hall of Famers, here we have James Lofton. He was one of my favorite receivers. Even though I was a Bears fan, I just always loved James Lofton. So I do have a, a handful of his card. He's another one of those guys that when I when I see his rookie card, I just kind of have to get it. <laughs> so he was the sixth overall pick, made it to the Hall of Fame in 2003, uh, eight-time Pro Bowler. When he retired, he had over 14,000 yards. He was the first player ever to reach 14,000 yards. Uh, so obviously he was the leading receiver of all time when he retired. Um, he also scored touchdowns in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And he was the second person to do it because Drew Hill did it one week earlier. So almost. And what I really like is, you know, these are his rookie card. You know, these are more of a vintage card. But one of the things I love that's done these days is the fact that, you know, they do make, uh, you know, these cards to recognize former players and get some of the younger collectors involved. So this one's number two, you know, 35 of 75. Uh, but it, but it's definitely nice to see, you know, these kind of cards available to kind of bridge the gap between, you know, the... the uh, Older generation and newer generation. So here we have Archie Manning. You know, obviously just with the Manning name. Thought I'd throw that one in there. Uh, Dan Fouts, again, Hall of Famer, great player. Um, you know, he's and he's a fun one to watch for sure. Um, now, this is where I'll mention Earl Campbell again. So, you know, this one is a card that I pulled from a pack. And then this is the one that actually came with the set. So I have a couple Earl Campbell cards. This is the most valuable card of the 1979 set. It's the most, you know, uh, sought after. And like I said, this is his only official NFL trading card from his playing days that was ever produced. So it's a nice one to get if you can. Uh, then we have here Donnie Shell. Uh, you know, Donnie Shell, great player for the Steelers uh, during those uh, exceptional Steelers play Super Bowl teams. Four-time Super Bowl champ. Made it to the Hall of Fame this year, and a five-time Pro Bowler as well. And then I'm including the June Jones card here for two reasons. Number one, um, he didn't do much in his NFL career. I don't even think he threw for 1,000 yards in his entire career. Um, but he was the head coach of the Falcons for a little while, and he was an interim coach on the Chargers, and uh, also head coach of uh, 
University of Hawaii and, and SMU. So he, he has some coaching experience. That's one reason I mentioned that. But then the number the main reason is I just love the look of this card. Look at this with all that mud and the torn jersey. I mean, that's to me, that's football. I love that stuff. So it's a, kind of a cool card to have. And I remember pulling that card as a kid, and that was one of my favorites just because of how rough that looked. I really liked that. Okay, I've got a few more things left, and then uh, I'll just show a few notable Hall of Famers, and we'll be done. Uh, with these cards, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning was that they have these little uh, little blurbs at the bottom of the players. And I just thought these were kind of funny, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring this here, uh, a couple of the ones that jumped out to me. So this one is, Mike enjoys meeting people. Just thought that was a kind of a funny one to, to go for. Now this guy right here, Walter White, not to be confused with Breaking Bad. However, if you want to know a little something about him, uh, Walter is one of the Chiefs' most eligible bachelors. So pretty good to spread that news in 1979. Uh, Bruce Harper here. We can see here, Bruce was high school friend of John Travolta. Kind of interesting. Uh, the next card here is of Roland Lawrence. And the, the, what it mentions here is, Roland has a brother named Roland. So his brother has one L in the name, and he has two L's. So I wonder how confusing that got for people. Uh, right here, Brian Boschnagel. On the back, we'll see... Brian attended 19 different schools between the 1st and 12th grade. That would be pretty crazy. Uh, defensive end for the Jets, Lawrence Pillars. Lawrence ate bread on the sidelines in 1979 to nurse an ulcer. Uh, Chicago Bear, Revy Sori. If we want to know a little about him, Revy often frequents the New York disco scene. Good to know for those in New York back in the day, I'm sure. And uh, Jim Langer of the Dolphins. This one cracked me up. Jim enjoys drinking beer. There we go. There we go. Okay, so just to round things out now, I'm just going to kind of real quickly just show a handful of these uh, Hall of Famers. Um, now, this one, first I'll start off with John Riggins. Uh, has a nice little thing. I thought this was kind of cool at the bottom. John's greatest football thrill was seeing his picture on a bubblegum card. So that's kind of cool. So when he saw his own card, he really thought that was a, a pretty cool thing. I've always wondered. Um, I've heard that a few players like to collect their own card, or not just their own cards, but collect cards in general. Uh, but, but you know, I kind of always wondered uh, what players thought. So for John Riggins, he thought that was a pretty big deal. This is Alan Page, NFL great. I love that card because it's his first card with the Chicago Bears. Go Bears. Uh, Larry Zonka, you know, after a few years with the uh, Giants and in the World League, he returned to the Dolphins. So here's some more Hall of Famers. We've got Mike Haynes, Ray Guy, Larry Little, Mean Joe Green, Leroy Selman, Kicker Jan Stenerud, Fred Dean, Tony Dorsett, and I'll give a shout out right here. I uh, I got to meet Tony Dorsett a while back. Um, I have this book. I'll actually show it at the end, uh, but I was able to meet him, and, and he signed my, my book uh, that I had that he wrote, and that was kind of cool. Uh, Mitch Tinglehoff, the notorious O.J. Simpson, Dan Deerdorf, Jack Youngblood, Mike Webster. There's a Steve Largent that I pulled in a pack, and then a Steve Largent uh, from the set that I purchased. The great Fran Tarkenton, and you'll see here he had been playing for so long. Look at the stat line on on the back of that thing. It's you know they had to use smaller print just to fit it all in. Uh, right here we have Art Shell and uh, another Raider, Gene Upshaw. Mel Blunt, Randy White, Franco Harris, Fred Bolitnikoff, we've got Jack Ham, Ted Hendricks, Ken Houston, 
Cliff Harris, Roger Staubach, Charlie Joyner, Bob Greasy, we've got John Stallworth, look at all these Hall of Famers, Dave Casper, and just a few more and we'll be done, and I probably missed some of the Hall of Famers, I would imagine, uh, Jack Lambert, and then we've got John Hanna, Paul Krause, Terry Bradshaw, Harry Carson, and the late, great Ken Stabler. All right, so again, if you take a look at this set and you look at some of the most notable uh, cards here, you've got great Hall of Famers. You've got some legendary rookies like Ozzie Newsome and uh, Earl Campbell. You know, so this is a, a very good set, very affordable for the price. If you go look at the what these sell for online versus a box of cards, you're going to see that you could get quite a few uh, great sets from back in the day. So this here I'll just kind of show. Uh, this is the, the book that I mentioned, Running Tough by Tony Dorsett. And he went ahead and, and autographed that for me, which was very cool. I even got a picture that my mom took shaking his hand. Uh, so anyway, that uh, that's going to do it for today. Again, I just uh, would encourage people to you know look at look at the vintage as well as the new stuff. It's, you know, obviously it's a it's a rush. It's super fun to open the new products and find those cards that really stand out. The one of ones, the autographs. You know, the, the, it's it's awesome. I can't deny that. But I think it's also a pretty great idea to look back at the past and take a look at uh, some of the old vintage sets, especially the more affordable ones. Um, as well. So anyway, if you like these videos, just know I, I have some other show and to tell videos for you to check out if you would like. Uh, feel free to click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. And everybody take care and have a great uh, rest of your day.